I'm Dennis Moreland with Dennis Moreland Tack, and we have the pleasure this afternoon of being with a good friend, Red Stegall. We're going to talk about Red's Cowboy Gathering and Western Swing Festival. How in the world did you get the idea to start it in the first place? I really didn't have the idea. It was John South and Jalen Burkett, and they were with the Extension Service. Okay. And, and we'd been back not long from uh, Alpine and Elko mm -hmm. and talked about cowboy gatherings and, and what they meant to us. And they said, well, you know, Fort Worth is the perfect place for one. Yes, sir. And so I said, okay, how do we do that? And they said, we'll get some sponsors and away we'll go. So Don Edwards was in on that, uh, on that meeting. And so they went out and got some sponsors. And the first year, it, it rained nine inches on Saturday. <laughs> and we designed it to not compete with anybody else's cowboy gathering. Right. And nobody else has a ranch rodeo, uh, or didn't at the time. Some of them may have them now that I'm not aware of. And uh, the chuck wagon cook off. You make them bring the wagons in pulled by a team. We do now. They don't unload them off the truck. No. <laughs> And that's a, that's a good deal. A chuck wagon's made to be pulled by a team, not sitting on a trailer behind a pickup. Well, our idea was that Fort Worth was the last stop for that chuck wagon on the Chisholm Trail before he reached Indian Territory. Right. And so we have records of, of what they bought. So when we have the chuck wagon cook off, we know what was available, what mm -hmm. spices were available. And they can't use anything else. They can't use a, a Cajun seasoning or some <laughs> exotic kind of seasoning. They have to use salt and pepper, cloves, cinnamon, and garlic. And that's all that was available. That's, that's all they had. And uh, we have those, those lists of what they bought. And so we felt like that if they were going to go on up the trail, they had to be roadworthy. Mm -hmm. So we wanted them to come in with horses and mules and make sure that they could go on across the river. Well... We had a wheel come off just for the corner of uh, Main and Exchange, and uh, Cowboy Murren owned that building right there on the corner, and he ran upstairs and found a wheel that exactly fit that way. Oh, really? <laughs> so we got them rolling, and they went on into the lawn. But uh, the judges go along in a buggy, and they watch those horses, and they watch the mules, they watch the wagons, make sure they're authentic. We designed the poetry and music uh, concerts, Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have a whole ton of people. We had to select people the best we could find, the best poets, the best purveyors of cowboy music. And uh, then we had a children's poetry contest. And then we have a group of poets uh, that follow the children's poetry contest. And they're, okay. you know, they do it all over the world. And uh, then we have a, before we start the children's contest, we have an open mic. And that's people who are writing but don't necessarily perform professionally. Mm -hmm. So they get a chance to get up there and spout their poetry and sing their songs. And I don't mind telling you this, I'm going to brag a little bit. Our scholarship program has two faces uh, for children of working ranch families. And that doesn't mean that their daddy has to own live in a lion camp. Right. He can own the ranch. And it's a small ranch and it's tough to make a living. And then we have that scholarship available, and we have scholarships for the students in our children's portrait contest, our children's fiddling contest, and now we have a scholarship for our student cook-off contestants. Oh, man. So they, they compete on Sunday morning cooking either uh, meat or dessert, mm -hmm. and then the winner gets a scholarship, and we manage it for them until they're ready to go to college. Nice. So since we started that, we have awarded over a million dollars in scholarships to deserving young people. That's it. And we're, we're really proud of that. It's neat that you bring this to Fort Worth and to the people that don't know what goes on on the ranch. So we've had a lot of support. The city has really been supportive. Uh, the law enforcement agencies are all on our side and help us out. Mm -hmm. And we have a wagon train that you're aware of that starts at Fort Richardson at Jacksboro on okay. a Sunday. And it winds up Thursday afternoon in the stockyards and comes in down Exchange Avenue. That's neat. Ranch Rodeo is Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. 
What all events do you have? Well, we have saddle bronc riding. Okay. We have uh, team sorting. Okay. We have uh, team branding. We have team doctoring. Okay. And the one that the crowd really likes is the wild cow milking. <laughs> it's a it's a fun event. Like I have told you before, it's it's the events based on the the skills and the daily work of the cowboy out on the ranch. Yes. And uh, those guys are pretty adept at it. That's, they're very good at it. You're preserving and educating the people that don't know what goes on on the ranch. When does this take place this year, and how does a person go about getting tickets if they're interested in coming, and it's really worth going to see? Well, Dennis, the event is always the fourth weekend in October. Okay. Not necessarily the last one, but always the fourth one. So it's the 26th, 27th, and 28th of October this year. Okay. And we sell the tickets through the box office at the Cowtown Coliseum. And it's quite an event. And there'll be worlds of people there. And it's, there's something for everybody to see there and everybody to do. We, we like to refer to it as a family western weekend. It's good to visit with you, Red, and this is a very important thing that you're doing for the Western lifestyle, for Fort Worth, and getting it all together and keeping it going. Well, Thank you very as much. As long as you would ask me. <laughs>